There are situations in which you will need a really small cooler. Take the Laser 3D ZX8 as an example. With an up to 72mm high cooler requirement, you can forget about any beefy monsters and you will need to settle for something smaller. But not that small. Yes, this will do it. Meet the Noctua NH-L12S, a 70mm high single tower cooler packed with a 120mm fan which, in the end, might even perform like a regular single tower cooler. Who knows? We, we will see. Who knows? So this is one of... This is one of Noctua's small form factor solutions, the NH-L12S. Out of the box, this little thing is compatible with the standard AM4 socket as well as everything older until the FM1 sockets for Team AMD. Over on the blue side of the world, we get support for the latest and greatest LGA1700 going back to the older LGA1150s, 2066, 2011-0 and Dash 3. Just keep in mind that Noctua still isn't able to break any space-time continuum, therefore LGA1700 socket extras will only be included for coolers produced while or after Q4 of 2021. The fan used on here is kinda special, the Noxia NF-A12X15, not to be confused with the monster NF-A12X25, to whom you will need a license as it can kick off the earth of its rotational axis. This 15mm thick fan can spin at up to 1850 RPM while pushing 55 CFM at 1.53mm of H2O and 23.9 dBA. As already mentioned, the NH-L12S can measure 70mm in height, and I'm emphasizing can pretty hard here. Once unboxed, the fan will be pre-installed in the center of the cooler. In this state, it is indeed only 70mm high. But what you can also do is take the fan and mount it on top of the cooler, making it 85mm high which is still not a lot considering that the already small wrath prism is about 10 millimeters higher. And yes, later on in this video we will play around with different fan positions and installation positions and orientations and what happens if we give this baby heatsink a bit boy fan. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's finish that mini heatsink. With a copper nickel plated base and four heat pipes, Noxia formed this cooler in a C-type build format. That being said, with about 70 millimeters in height, this thing is so small that it can absolutely count as a low-profile cooler. Probably also the reason why they call it L12S, like low-profile 12S, not like C14S, like C-style 14S. But anyway, I digress. One of the most important aspects about a cooler this small would be the RAM compatibility. But to understand that, we first need to cover the installation method. On Intel LGA sockets without a backplate, we can use the provided backplate and mount it down on the other side using the spacer, mounting bars and just the normal thumbscrew. Here, please note that we can install the mounting bars either alongside the RAM slots or in a 90 degree angle of them, which we will need in a minute. Over on AMD's side, we can remove the pre-installed black retention brackets and place the AMD spacers on top. The grey ones for AM4 and the white ones for everything else. Now on an AMD socket, we are unable to rotate the mounting bars due to how far the holes are apart from each other. But Noxia includes two sets of AMD bars. The long ones allowing you to install the whole thing alongside the RAM slots and the short ones at for the top and bottom of the CPU. All of what we just showed allows us to either install the cooler with the heatsink going towards or away from the RAM slots or turn the whole thing 90 degrees and let the cooler go a bit higher or lower on the whole board. And all of that is really damn important because if you install it using the standard Noctua mounting way with the fan in its original position underneath the heatsink, you end up with a RAM clearance of 35mm, which is basically a bare naked stick of RAM. If you reposition the fan on top of the heatsink, which Noctua just calls high clearance mode, you can get that number up to 48mm. But this might still be too low for your RAM. Therefore, if we use the long brackets on an AMD socket or install the Intel brackets alongside the RAM slots, we can turn the cooler around, making it not protrude as much over the RAM slots and therefore enjoy RAM as high as we like. As long as you don't use the first RAM slot. Yep, that's right. 
no matter what you do, the first slam slot will always have that 35 or 48 millimeter restriction. And I believe that this is the biggest flaw that this cooler has. Looking at it as realistically as I can, there is a very small amount of people who would be using a low profile cooler as this one in combination with a standard ADX board and its four RAM slots. A scenario where blocking the first RAM slot isn't as devastating as dual channel mode will not require you to use the first slot, basically allowing for a normal use case in most cases. But this is not for normal use cases. This is a low profile cooler, so it should be perfectly fine to assume that the most used form factor for this would also be Mini ITX, which only has two RAM slots one of which will always have that 48 or 35 millimeter restriction. And I believe that this is highly unfortunate. It would have been so much more useful if the cooler was shifted to the left or right exactly one centimeter. This way you would have given yourself two decent RAM sticks. But okay, that's a possible improvement for the future, but how does it perform right now? And before we cover it, yes, we benchmarked it in both push pull, fan underneath, fan on top of the heatsink and every other combination we were able to think about. No, there was no difference whatsoever. The CPU temperature was exactly the same all across the board. Using our standardized CPU benchmark, the NH-L12S managed to keep the CPU at 63 degrees C. Yes, this is the last spot on our chart, that's true, but you need to look at the bigger picture here. First off, the NHU9S, or Pure Rock Slim, did not even make it on the list. That's, that's just a fact. And this thing is still smaller than a AMD Red Prism. But most importantly, noise normalizing the results, while it's definitely true that the L12S will not be a Red Prism in total cooling power, it will be quieter at every step of the way. And if you don't do something as stupid as I did and install a low profile cooler on a 3900X but go with something more appropriate like a 5600X, it will be very much alright. But before we end the review, I wanted to go over something else. I do believe that this little L12S has a pretty big untapped potential. While the product page already informed us that the fan clips used to keep the NFA NFA12X25, ah, oh, such a, that's such a hard name. On the heatsink, could also be used to exchange the fan for a standard 25mm fan. They did not really prepare us for the difference this would make. To make it clear from the beginning, no, there is no way to install two NFA12X25s on here, as the space in the center is just not big enough. But using a single one on the top got the temps down to 59 degrees C above ambient. That's a single degree behind the Alpenfin Brocken 3. That's what potential looks like. And I just can't wrap my head around why this is not yet a thing. Using a A12X25 on top makes the whole cooler 95mm high, which kinda perfectly fits into the gap between a L12S or the original one at 70mm and a C14S at 150mm. Just call it L12A and you have a brand new cooler. And before anybody asks, this is a very bad idea. I tried it, but the X25 fan on top spins fast enough to make the x 15 fan uh, in, in the center f spin faster than it is supposed to and, and it's a horrible sound. Don't, don't do that, no. But to recap the whole cooler, considering its ridiculously small size, it performs surprisingly well on the noise to performance front and it's a perfect fit for things like a Ryzen 5, a i5, but I wouldn't use it on anything harder and bigger. It's... Why would you even do that? As far as build quality goes, it's the usual not you are way. Everything is sturdy and there is absolutely nothing negative to say here. Due to it being a low profile cooler, the compatibility is kind of restricted, which was indeed expected. However, I think offsetting it exactly a centimeter would be great for any future update as this allows you to use whatever RAM you like. And as a last point, this should definitely be a thing. There are more than enough small form factor cases with a sub 100mm cooler requirement and, and this just makes so much sense and it would probably end up being the best cooler for the job at that 100mm. It's, 
it just makes sense. On a side note, before I forget it, as this is a standard Lapcha cooler, we get the standard low noise adapter thingy, which I would still not recommend to use, and we get a tube of thermal paste, like the usual stuff. But okay, this should sum it up for the Noctua NHL. 12s. At this point I would like to thank Noxia for sending us over this mini beast and if you want to keep watching have a look at Noxia U12a. Until now this is like probably my favorite cooler, it's, it's really amazing. And on a side note, we now have a discord server so use the link in the description below and come along and share your dirty cable management pics or whatever people do on discord. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you on the next one. Bye bye.